Here's our next example of how we can use the information or the knowledge that we now have about thermolinear expansion on um, a situation like this. Let's say that we're building a road deck and we're using concrete sections and of course if you look at concrete roadways they usually have gaps placed at certain distances from each other and they usually they fill the gap with some tar-like material that is pliable that allows the concrete to expand and contract and so they, they keep some uh, material in there that is waterproof so that water doesn't seep in there and destroy the roadbed. So let's say that each section is 100 feet long, they're made out of concrete, and we want to know how big a gap to allow so that we can have temperatures of minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime and 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime without the road deck getting destroyed because if you don't make the gaps wide enough and the concrete begins to expand and begins to push into each other, it could literally uh, break the concrete, crack up the concrete, and you want to prevent that from happening. Now, since you have a gap on each side, how do you deal with that? Well, it turns out if we simply associate each gap with just one section, so this gap associated with the change in length here, and this gap is associated with the change in length there, and then this gap here would be associated with the next section over here and so forth. We only have to worry about one gap per section, and so the change in the width of the gap should equal the maximum change in the length of one of those sections. So let's calculate the delta L for that temperature change, and so the gap should be at least that, if not a little bit bigger, to allow for the expansion of the road deck, so that if you make it too small, of course, you squeeze all that, that um, tar-like material out there, and that's not a good thing. Then you have all these bumps you have to drive over, so you want to make it wide enough. So the minimum, the minimum gap width would be equal to, of course, the delta L here. All right, we know that delta L is equal to the coefficient of linear expansion times the original length times the change in the temperature. And since the coefficient is given in terms of centigrade degrees, we have to convert the delta temperature in Fahrenheit degrees to, so of course, the delta temperature in centigrade degrees. So delta temperature in Fahrenheit degrees, you can see, would be 140 Fahrenheit degrees because the difference between that, of course, is 140 degrees, and then we have to convert that to centigrade degrees. So if we then multiply that times um, 5 over 9, because that converts uh, centigrade degrees to Fahrenheit degrees, so that's actually a nice little way to write that conversion, then uh, you can see that this disappears, and we now have centigrade degrees. So we take 140 times 5, Divided by 9 equals, and that's 77.8, 77.8 centigrade degree difference. Now, let's plug all that in here. So the alpha, the coefficient of linear expansion for concrete, 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree. The original length was 100 feet, and the change in the temperature was 77.8 centigrade degrees. Of course, this cancels out with that. And so times 100 and times 12e to the 6 minus equals, and so this is equal to 0 0.09 feet, which is about 1 inch, uh, which is about 2.5 centimeter. So, we would need to leave a gap of roughly 1 inch between the road, preferably a little bit more than an inch, so that the road deck would not get destroyed as it changes from cold to hot weather and so forth. And that's how you do that.